Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to bring up the Aaron Rodgers thing. I saw it in the media, and then I was at a Bible study last night, and it came up, and I want to just show you guys something. There's a quote from him. How can you believe God would condemn people to hell? And he said God is, you know, he gave some characteristics of God. So that's the first thing we have to address right there. God does not will for any man to go to hell. He doesn't. He wants us all to be saved. That's why he sent his son. A prophecy scholar and pastor I follow, David Jeremiah, says he proposes we choose to either believe Jesus Christ is who he says he is or we choose to call God a liar. So it is not God who condemns us. It is our own beliefs, our own lack of faith, or we're calling God a liar. That's David Jeremiah, David Hawking. I follow a lot of the best Bible scholars and prophecy guys. And now I want to go over some Bible verses. And I would like to speak as if I'm speaking to Aaron Rodgers. And then prophesy to the nations that he's fulfilling Romans 1. So Jesus Christ is who he says he is. And the first thing I would like to say is to Aaron Rodgers and to all the men out there and women, when Jesus rose from the grave, he showed himself to 500 witnesses. And the disciples went to their death, <laughs> their death for him. A torturous death. A death where the Romans had come up with the, the most horrific way to kill someone. Whipping them. Beating them. Punching them. Nailing them to a tree. Leaving them out there. Pretty much butt naked where the birds and animals could, could feast on them. This is a gnarly death. People would not go to that kind of death if Christ did not rise from the, from the grave. Being that that's evidence and proof right there, for you to say that that didn't happen is for you to say that they all were crazy or all on drugs. So I would say at least consider that first. And to show you that Jesus said, but since we believe he did and all those guys went to a death, to follow him because they realized he is God incarnate and they were willing to follow him to a torturous death because they were choosing him. We read what he says, Jesus in Matthew 24. He says that hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. So hell was a created place of judgment for Satan and those who followed him in their rebellion against God. So the Bible says that the devil and his angels will eventually be consigned to hell. So read Ezekiel 28 to see about Lucifer's fall. Read Isaiah 14 to see about Lucifer's fall. And study prophecy. So they fell and took a third of the angels with them. And so they want us to not believe the word of God. But God shows us that he foretells what's going to happen before it happens. And that's how we can know that he is God. And that the word of God is inspired and holy. And so I have a sister who went to Berkeley. And she is doubting God. And so I... The best thing I can say to you, Aaron Rodgers, and to people like my sister and to other atheists, because I can see how that's basically what the atheists like to lean on, that how could a God, it just doesn't make sense. But what I would challenge you guys to do is go out to disprove the Word of God, because you can't. Lee Strobel tried to do it, and he wrote that book, A Case for Faith. He was a doubter. C.S. Lewis was a doubter at one time. And I would like to point out that from Genesis 3.15, where the fallen angel, Satan, who is described as a serpent, tempts Eve, breaks up the marriage that God joined together by saying, eat of this tree of knowledge, 
and be like a god. And then in Genesis 3.15, we get the first prophecy that the second seed of Adam is going to step on the serpent's head. And, and that's, that's Jesus Christ. And so we can see that's a prophecy that Jesus is going to come through the lineage of David, through the tribe of Judah. And we can see that Pharaoh tried to kill that lineage. So we already see babies being killed, trying to kill that lineage. Later we see Herod try to kill Jesus a second time. In Isaiah 7:14, it says that he's going that the that Jesus will be born of a virgin. Isaiah 700 years beforehand. We see prophecies in Psalms from David a thousand years beforehand saying that they're going to cast lots for his clothes and not one bone will be broken. And so we can see this. Go out and disprove it, you guys. Go, go look for it for yourself and come away blown away. And then let me, let me tell you guys what else uh, Aaron Rodgers said. So he, Aaron Rodgers is professing he was a Christian and, and he just stopped believing that a God would consign people to hell. And so I'm giving you a quote from him. And what he says is, I just don't believe rules. Let me find his quote. Here it is. He, he mentioned rules and binary systems don't really resonate with me. Now I can tell you that's what the universities want to say. They want to they change things. They want to say, hey, you know what? We're smarter than those Christians, but go out and try to disprove prophecy. So Aaron Rodgers, rules and binary systems don't really resonate with me. So let me go into the book of Ezekiel and show you how God used Ezekiel to say that they were saying the same thing. And what they were saying is, your ways are not just. And then God says to them, O oh, house of Israel, is it my way that is unjust or is it not your ways that are unjust? And so what was Ezekiel? Ezekiel was prophesying for God because Israel was falling away. What was Israel doing that God had to pour judgment on him? We can go back all the way to Deuteronomy to see 1400 years before Christ to see that God said, don't kill babies. God said, don't work with the satanic elements of the diviners and the sorcerers and all of these things. And that's what Israel started doing. They started working for Satan. And they ended up getting so apostate that they started killing their own babies. Aaron Rodgers, aren't you glad that your mom didn't abort you? I see that the Je uh, Green Bay Packers are for abortion and for, um, for things that are against God. So I'm saying to you, Aaron Rodgers, aren't you glad that your mom didn't abort you? And so God was judging Israel for serving false gods that went to the point where their, their, the marriage that God created together became broken apart. And they started to have wild sexualities, homosexual, uh, lesbianism. All of these things led to a debased, the heart was gone, the flesh was gone, and the mind was gone, and they started killing their babies. They started giving up babies to Molech. And so God was judging their rebellion so they would turn to him. And he was using prophets. And the prophets had to suffer mightily. Isaiah was cut in half. Jeremiah the weeping prophet was killed. And so God says, I'm going to scatter you, Israel, to the ends of the earth. But then I'm going to regather you back up. And in Isaiah 66, 8, I believe, it says, who would have thought a nation overnight or something to that effect? Because that's showing God's gathering them back up. So here's more prophecy for you guys to go into. God said he would bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That has happened over history. In 1948, Israel became a nation to fulfill Isaiah 66 8 i believe and he says that they would be prospering which they are now so we see things that are coming to fulfillment and this aaron Rodgers public thing is fulfilling romans 1 
Romans 1 is professing believers who change. I'm going to Romans 1, verse 18. It's God's wrath against sinful humanity so that we will turn to Him. It's never too late to turn to Him. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all of the godless and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their own wickedness since they may be known since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. So here Aaron Rodgers, listen to this. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Because part of Aaron Rodgers' rant is how about people who have never had the Bible? Well, we're seeing in God's word that they still, we still, we can look up in the air and we can see the birds flying and know I didn't create this. I can look and say, what a glorious creation you have created, God. It's innate in me to know that there is a creator that has created this and I bow down and worship him because I can't create it. And I know eventually I'm going to die. And the Bible tells me that my creator wants me to worship him. And so what we're seeing in Romans is for creation screams of God's invisible qualities. His eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. So without the word of God, we're like, we're innately known. We're, we're his, we're, we're created from him. He, he breathed into us. He's, we're in his image. We are his image bearers. You are an image bearer, Aaron Rodgers. You are his image. His workmanship, the way you throw a football, it's a work of art. He created you like that. He wants you to give him glory. He wants you to realize that you could have been aborted, but you are eternally destined to choose him or not choose him. You are either going to preach for him or you're going to preach against him. So I pray that you would preach for him from this point on. But here's what happens to professed believers in Romans 1. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So see, their thinking became futile, their hearts became darkened, and all they and they claimed to be wise, they became fools. And they exchanged the glory, listen to this, the glory of immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings. So basically taking the incorruptible God and changing him into our thoughts on who he should be to fit us, which isn't, it never works that way well, you guys. All of us who have been redeemed from the hand of the foe know that when we were living in our own anger and our own, this isn't fair, we realized we weren't helping ourselves. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to rescue us, for penetrating hard hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So let's continue. We see human beings in these days more concerned about birds and animals and reptiles than babies. And that's what it's saying. Therefore, God gave them over to their sinful desires. So again, we choose. He's not condemning us. We're condemning ourselves. He gave them over to their sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity, for the degrading of their bodies one with another. Then they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised, amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. So we see the heart is gone. Now the flesh is gone. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations with unnatural ones. In the same way, men abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust one for another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. Okay? And we see what happens after that. It's a big list. So we just read professing believers will change the incorruptible God for what they want him to fit into their, into their lifestyle. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator. Okay? 
This message from Aaron Rodgers has atheists cheering, has universities cheering who are against God. It has pro-abortion groups cheering. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Paul tells us that the God of this world has blinded their eyes. Paul tells us in Ephesians 2.2 that Satan is the prince in the power of the air. Church, look for opportunities like this because you're going to go one or two ways. You're either going to say, yeah, God isn't a God of judgment and you're going to think that you need to soften the word of God to save more people when you're not. Don't, don't fall into the pattern of trying to change who God says he is. It's his word that does the work. They choose. I choose. I needed people to preach hard into me that there was a heaven and there is a hell. That there's a heaven and there's a hell. And you choose. And Jesus took, the, took our place on the cross. The, the, the prophets, they suffered mightily. If anybody had a reason to say it's not fair, they're preaching for God. They're saying, thus saith the Lord, repent, turn, stop killing the babies. Stop doing these things. Come back to God. And the church religious people killed them. Okay? And they foreshadowed Jesus Christ. They let us know who the Messiah is. Isaiah 7, 14 is going to be born of a virgin. Isaiah 40, verse 3, there's going to be one crying out in the wilderness. That's John the Baptist. We can go over it and see it's true. And it's God's word that's going to penetrate the heart. We don't have to change it. We don't have to worry about how people are going to receive it. We just preach it from love. Okay? Jesus Christ took it all on the cross for us. He laid down his life. Everything he did was to fulfill scripture perfectly. He put the religious leaders in check. He called them out for being hypocrites. Okay? So he wants to save. He came to save. He came to bring us back into wholeness with the Father. We have a lot of prophecies that are accelerating in these days that we're in. So look for opportunities in the media. The media is what Satan uses, the prince of the power of the air. He wants you to believe that all religions go to heaven. That's not true. Jesus said he's the only way, the truth, and the life. And anyone who comes to him and confesses with their mouth that he is Lord and that he's risen from the grave shall be saved. Keep confessing. Keep saying who he is. If you're battling addictions, uh, Jesus is trying to... He, he wants to save you from that if you're battering, bat, battling suicide. So, so when we see these things, we see that people are committing suicide. They're changing the corruptible, the incorruptible God for a corruptible image of who they think he should be. And it's depressing. It's suicidal. So preach, to, preach that Jesus wants to save you from that. Okay, look for opportunities, you guys, to take what is said in the media and show how it's filling... Bible prophecy, and that these are last days. These are days where Israel's a nation again. Israel's prospering like it says in Ezekiel 37. There are things that are happening. There's, some, there's a great falling away. We see it happening all the time, every day. And churches are falling away. Teachers are preaching to what people want to hear. It says that they will gather around themselves preachers who will preach what they want to hear to itching ears. Okay, we're in that time where there's a great falling away. Repent and be healed. God's arm is not too short to heal. He came and rescued me from the deepest pit. And now all I do is write about him and preach about him and love him. And I, I, I just love who he is. And he wants to save you. And he wants to save your family. And he wants to save Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't want any of anybody to go to hell. He wants us to confess who he is. He wants us to thank him for what he's done and, and, and look at the beauty he's created. God bless you guys. Going to the gym.